Hey guys, Mike Montefusco, Raw Fitness. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the truth about cardio for fat loss. Um, if you go to uh, any commercial gym, you've been to any commercial gym for any extended period of time, you see tons of ellipticals and treadmills and bikes and, and people spending long durations of time on it. Yet, if you really examine people's results, you'll see people coming in and getting on the same treadmill the same time every day and they still look the absolute same. <clears throat> Why is that? <clears throat> we know that getting on those treadmills burns calories, so why isn't the fat coming off? <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about a way more efficient uh, method of doing your cardio uh, that will burn uh, a lot more calories and help you to really shed that body fat uh, more efficiently than what the traditional gym member is getting. So <clears throat> uh, there's a couple key points that I wanted to point out to you uh, before I get into things. Uh, that are going to kind of dictate the principles. Uh, number one, the only way to really lose any weight whatsoever is uh, based on the law of thermodynamics, which really simply says if you want to drop weight, calories out has got to be greater than calories in. <clears throat> okay, You've got to burn more calories than you ingest and you will drop weight. It really, there's a lot of variables that make those things uh, happen, but that's the basic premise of it. Um, so I want you to hold that in your brain. Calories out has got to be greater than calories in. And the second thing I want you to understand is that um, there are three different energy systems that the human body uh, has uh, that it uses to produce energy. So the first one uh, that we've all heard of the most is the human body uses oxygen uh, or uh, you know aerobic uh, energy system. We've all heard the term aerobic. And all, that's all it means is that you're using oxygen. Uh, predominantly. <clears throat> uh, there are two other uh, systems. There's glycolysis and ATPCP. Uh, this is not a, <clears throat> um, a human anatomy physiology lesson, um, so I'm going to keep it real simple. Those are just for shorter duration, more intense bursts of energy uh, than, the, than oxygen would be used for. So <clears throat> uh, we've got oxida uh, oxidative or oxygen, aerobic, and then the two anaerobic uh, um, methods for producing energy. So now that you've got that law of thermodynamics, aerobic versus anaerobic, um, I'm going to uh, draw an illustration about how cardio really works and, and why you should probably be doing it different than you are right now. <clears throat> so I'll make a little chart right here, right? And right here we're going to call this heart rate. And here, we'll call this time. Say so that's 20 minutes, and then we'll do 80, 100, 120, 140, 60, 80. Okay, now if you've ever gone to a commercial gym and you've gotten on a treadmill, a bike, elliptical, there's a little chart on it. You guys have probably looked at it. It says, okay, this is my target heart rate zone, okay? My target heart rate zone, so I gotta get my heart rate in there, and that's where I gotta do my cardio so that I'm burning fat. <clears throat> it is true, but it is very, very misleading, and this is why. Um, when you, the lower your heart rate is, the higher the percentage of calories burned are from fat. So, legitimately, if you're sitting there right now watching this and you're at a resting heart rate, most of the calories, if not all the calories you're burning right now, are coming from fat. That's the truth. You're not burning very many calories, but what you are burning is coming from fat. Now, the higher the heart rate gets, we get to a point where it's not all coming from fat. A lot of it will be burned from carbohydrates or uh, uh, you can even burn muscle if you get your heart rate high enough for long enough periods of time. So, <clears throat> so based on that, they say, hey, well, what's the highest we can get it where it's still predominantly fat? Where's the sweet spot? And so they found this target heart rate zone for you to stay in. But this is how it really works. So if we have Susie Gym member comes in and she goes to do her cardio and her target heart rate is, we'll say 120 beats per minute. She comes in, she gets on the treadmill, she gets it up to 120 and she does her 20 minutes of cardio right there. Now, at the end of her 20 minutes, We'll say Susie, and I'm just going to make it really round numbers, but you'll get the illustration. Let's say Susie has burned 
200 calories, and let's say that 75% are from fat. So that means she's burned 150 fat calories. There it is. Um, so 200 total, 75% from fat, 150 fat calories. Now let's say that Jimmy Jim member comes in and his anaerobic threshold is 130 beats per minute. Now anaerobic threshold means it's the point where the human body can no longer really use just oxygen for it. It's got to start to tap into these more intense energy sources. Okay, um, so for him, you know, we can count. We have ways of calculating that number here. Um, I think the main point of this uh, of this blog post is to know that uh, you need to get your heart rate up and get it to spike. So if you don't know that number, um, yes, it's, you're not going to be able to program as efficiently, but you can be doing a lot better job if you're doing than you're doing right now if you're doing steady state cardio. <clears throat> so he comes on in, he gets his heart rate up, and then it comes back down, and then he gets it up, and then it comes back down. Okay, <clears throat> this is what his cardio looks like. Okay, so he's going into his target heart rate zone but he's also spiking his heart rate way above that anaerobic threshold. Label it there, 80. Multiple times during the course of the session. So now here's what happens. Over the course of Jimmy's 20 minutes, he has burned 400 calories, okay? Let's say 25% of them are from fat, and I'm probably shooting a little low here, so 25, percent from fat. So he's burned 100 fat calories. 100 fat calories there. <clears throat> okay, so this person burned more calories from fat, but Jimmy burned a lot more total calories. Okay, so now we've got a lot more total calories. We go back to our calories out versus calories in. Uh, um, illustration here and we know that Jimmy is a lot more likely to drop body weight period uh, than the person who did the steady state cardio. Um, even though less calories are from fat, even mostly uh, those fat calories are bur he's burned have more of a chance to change his overall weight. And that's not even the best part. The best part is, is that the human body does not like to have to use these more intense energy systems if it doesn't have to doesn't like to do that. So the fact that he broke that threshold multiple times, the human body is going to adapt now. Um, and you know, it's, I'll put the illustration, everyone's lifted weights before, you go to the gym, you do three sets of 10 reps with heavy weight, and what happens? The next day or two, you get sore. Well, why do you get sore? The body is adapting. The body is changing itself to make you stronger because it doesn't want to struggle with that amount of weight anymore. Uh, same thing happens when we do uh, our metabolic conditioning or our cardio in this fashion. I broke that anaerobic threshold, so now for the next 24 to 48 hours, the human body's going to adapt. It's going to build more mitochondria in the cell. There's a whole bunch of, like I said, physiology uh, that's going to happen here that we don't need to get into, but know that that takes energy and burns calories to do that. So what happens is we get a big afterburn effect. For the next 24 to 48 hours after he gets off that treadmill, his, he is burning tons more calories than he would uh, um, if he just did steady state cardio. Here, steady state cardio, 20 minutes, you get off the treadmill, when you're done, you're done. That's it. Okay. So that's even more added benefit to doing the interval method. Um, I hope this illustration makes sense to you why you shouldn't just get on a treadmill. If, hey, listen, if you get on a treadmill and your goal is to go jog because you like jogging on a treadmill or jogging around town, um, then by all means, go ahead and jog. I mean, I like going for a, a, a nice jog myself. The sun shines on me. Uh, it's a great thing. But if your goal is fat loss, then that's not the way that you should be proceeding with that. And I, and I hope this illustration makes sense. Uh, below this in the blog post, I'm going to take a metabolic conditioning program that takes zero equipment, no treadmill, uh, nothing but your own body weight and a little bit of open space in your house. 
uh, and I want you to try that out. Now that will give you a great afterburn effect. So thanks for watching this whole presentation. Hopefully it didn't bore you too much with the talking head uh, in front of the whiteboard. Um, best wishes. Thanks.